Seven. Six. It can't be. That's inside the room. It's reading right, man. Look. Well, you're not reading it right. Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of Digital Fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn. Today's deck is a doozy. We're still on a Roaming Throne kick, trying to find the best tribal deck to use with Roaming Throne because it's just incredibly fun and I have to do it. Uh, <laughs> before we get into today's deck, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons over at patreon.com slash quarantine capricorn. That's Yuck Fuzi and Squirrel at the Brew Crew Elite tier. And then of course, our forever CPU savior, Terrence Rohrbach. Thank you so much for everything you guys you guys have contributed and done for this channel over the years. I appreciate it greatly. Uh, also, we just hit 3K subscribers. Not only do we hit 3K subscribers, at the time of taping this video, we're at 3,750. Somehow, in just two and a half days, we got another 750 subscribers. I have no idea how or why. But thank you guys all for subscribing and, and joining the Brew Crew. I appreciate it greatly. Um, welcome to the family. Uh, we are almost to 4K, and it's crazy. Now, we're going to do a 3K celebration stream uh, this Thursday on YouTube. Normally, every Thursday, I do a community night stream on Twitch. This Thursday, we're going to do it on YouTube. We're going to celebrate 3,000 subscribers and... The entire night will be you guys being able to play games of MTG Arena against me. I will be launching uh, channel memberships, and I'll also be announcing a few other things that the channel has uh, has lined up during that stream. So uh, make sure you're there for that. It'd be super cool to hang out and get to know you guys. Uh, this deck in particular is called Gliss's Throne. The idea here is we're using Roaming Throne with Phyrexians, like I've said. But we're trying to focus on Incubate and Aristocrats type synergies so that we can get a ton of Incubate triggers off Roaming Throne and then a ton of Death triggers when they die off Roaming Throne and a whole bunch of extra spice added into the deck by getting multiple triggers off of Glissa, both versions of Glissa, which is kind of crazy. Uh, before I break... Before I... Before I break down the deck... Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Let's keep things moving. Let's keep it let's keep it going. Uh, I'm super stoked about the potential for this channel's future now. So uh, let's do it, man. Let's let's get to 4K. The dream is alive and it's because of you guys. So I appreciate it greatly. Um, catch me live over on Twitch Monday through Friday. That's twitch.tv slash quarantine Capricorn. Because if I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming. Let's do this thing. All right, so this deck is kind of nuts. What we're trying to do here is utilize Roaming Throne with the Phyrexian Tribal type, or I guess Kindred type as it's called now. Um, and there's a couple different ways you can actually take Phyrexians when it comes to Phyrexian Tribal, especially with the Roaming Throne. Uh, this version, we're trying to go over the top with, with Incubate synergies uh, and some Aristocrat synergies tossed in as well if the game goes along. So, at the core of the deck, we have four Roaming Thrones, four mana artifact creature. It's a 4 4 with Ward 2. Choose a creature type when it comes into play. All triggered abilities from creatures of that type get doubled. Well, I shouldn't say get doubled, they trigger an additional time. Um, so, the first one will double it, but a second one will just will add a third trigger. It won't go up to four. It's a, a very important to denote that. Um, but what's really cool about Roaming Throne is the fact that if you have two of them on the field and you choose the same creature type, they each affect each other. And Ward is technically a triggered ability. Ward triggers when it gets targeted by a spell. So they will actually make each of them get an additional Ward 2. So each Roaming Throne then goes up to Ward 4 in order to take out. Uh, and a lot of times people don't realize that right away and they think that they can take out one of the roaming thrones by paying an extra two mana uh, and then they don't have enough mana to pay an extra total of four mana. So roaming throne in multiples, super good. We're going to run the full, the full play set of four here. But there's a lot of really cool things we can trigger with this. Let's start with Glissa. This is the only thing uh, in the deck that costs more than three other than the roaming throne. And Glissa Herald of Predation is a 5-mana 3-5. Five 
Uh, at the beginning of combat, we get to choose one. We either incubate two twice, transform all incubator tokens, or give all Phyrexians first strike and death touch. Uh, each of these abilities can be really good on its own. If we get a huge board already, we can alpha strike in with the first strike and death touch. It's really hard for them to block, but they'll probably have to or they'll die. Um, so we can create a scenario where they lose a lot of their board uh, and we keep all of ours. Um, but also we can do things like incubate two and then immediately turn them into creatures uh, with the double trigger if we have a throne in play. Uh, we can do things like transform all our incubator tokens and give everything first strike and death touch until end of turn because we get two triggers if the roaming thrones in play uh we can do a lot of really nutty things but typically what we're going to do is just go way over the top growing our board presence by incubating two four times instead of twice um but having the versatility of dropping this on five and immediately getting the value for no extra mana of you know an additional trigger off of Roaming Throne that we play on Curve the turn before, super, super good. So since we're already kind of doing some Incubate stuff with this, um, the deck definitely heavily leans into an Incubate theme. Uh, let's start at the bottom of the curve here. We've got three Screlves because it is a Phyrexian. It's going to help protect our creatures. And then we've got four Progenitor Exarchs. Now, what's cool about Progenitor Exarch is it scales. So if we drop this a little later on the in the game, say turn five, We'll get uh, two three threes instead of one. We'll incubate three twice instead of once. Uh, but if we drop it after we have a roaming throne, which specifically lines up as a turn four play and then turn five progenitor X arc with X being two, uh, instead of getting two incubate threes, two three threes, it's going to be four. Uh, and that can be absolutely nuts. And then if we get up to seven mana, instead of making three three threes, we can make six. Uh, it turns into absolute shenanigans, and it's cr even crazier if we get a second roaming thrown down because now each of those things triggers three times instead of once, and it just gets it just gets completely absurd. But even be able being able to turn one of our incubate tokens into a creature at instant speed with the tap ability here can be pretty good in the right scenario because we are running a, a lot of incubate in this deck. Moving on to our two drop slot. Speaking of incubate, Norn's Inquisitor. Super good with Roaming Throne. Two mana, one, one. It incubates two when you enter the battlefield. And whenever a permanent you control transforms into a Phyrexian, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So when it first enters the battlefield, if you have a Roaming Throne out, it's actually going to incubate two twice. So you're going to get two, two, two incubate tokens off your one, one, two mana creature, which is nuts. And then whenever your incubate, incubate tokens transform into the actual Phyrexians, not only will they get an additional plus one plus one counter, they'll get a second additional plus one plus one counter from the roaming throne. So if you play this with a roaming throne out, you get two incubate twos and each of those can turn into four fours. It ends up giving you nine power and toughness on the battlefield for this two mana. Granted, it's six mana by the time you're done because you have to pay to transform those incubate tokens. But if you can transform them with a progenitor, progenitor exarch, that actually saves you mana that you can continuously... Uh, be able to use to get even more pressure on the battlefield instead of having to flip your your uh, incubate tokens which is super helpful if you're just trying to close out the game as quick as possible we've also got four grafted butcher um since we're in phyrexian tribal this is a no-brainer and an absolute must play it doesn't specifically get any uh value from the roaming throne uh we can give all of our creatures menace twice which doesn't do anything uh, but that doesn't matter. This card is so good in Phyrexian Tribal by itself that if every other creature is getting exponential value off the Roaming Throne and then we're able to give all of those creatures plus one plus one and Menace until end of turn, it's crazy. Also, because we are able to sort of multiply the number of Incubate tokens that we make with this deck because of Roaming Throne, it's a lot easier to have an artifact to sacrifice to bring Grafted Butcher back from our graveyard into play. And what's cool is we don't have to actually turn the incubate token into a phyrexian creature and spend the two mana before we can sacrifice it to the butcher so we can just have that token not have to spend the two mana to transform it and instead just spend the four mana sack the token not transformed to bring back the grafted butcher and that helps us alpha strike that turn because that's another turn we get menace until end of turn on all of our creatures which is nice uh, we've also got scrap gorger scrap gorger is cool because <laughs> exiling a card is a triggered ability and putting an oil counter on the scrap gorger 
is a triggered ability. So not only can this come down on two, and if we have a roaming throne, it's going to be able to tap for mana, exile two things, get two counters, get to becoming a 3-3 three, three a lot quicker, and also get rid of maybe problematic cards in our opponent's graveyard a lot quicker, two instead of one uh, in one go. But the big thing here is it curves out super well into Roaming Throne. We can turn two Scrap Gorger, which gives us an extra mana, so that turn three we can Roaming Throne, and then we're, we're way ahead. Turn four, we can play a three drop and a two drop, or the Glissa Herald of Predation, and we could just start going way over the top. And if you get something like Roaming thrown out on turn three rather than turn four, um, it's it's that much better because of the Ward two. The Ward two is t if you if you play Roaming Throne on on turn four, it's you're kind of on the fence. You're 50 50 that your opponent might be able to just have the extra mana to pay for it and remove this thing. Um, and that be their whole turn, but they can get rid of it, right? Whereas if you get this out on turn three, that could make all the difference in the world with them just being one mana short for having to pay the ward, and then that means you can actually get value off the roaming throne, get some extra triggers before they can afford to remove it. And even then, when they finally can afford to remove it, it takes their whole turn, it takes up all of their mana, but because you got these extra triggers on it uh, for one turn, you got so much board presence, you got so much further ahead that if they take their whole turn to just deal with the roaming throne and aren't able to deal with the extra board presence you've created from these extra triggers that you had from roaming throne being on the turn for one whole turn cycle and you being able to use it, uh, a lot of times it's just too hard for them to catch up and you win anyway. So if you can get roaming throne down on three, uh, you kind of put your opponent into a screwed if you do, screwed if you don't sort of situation. So it's tough to play the right mana, mana dork that can get out roaming throne on turn three while adhering to the tribal stipulations of something like roaming throne and the tribal lands that we're using. Sorry, kindred lands that we're using in this deck. Um, but we're lucky with Phyrexians, and that Scrap Gorger is a Phyrexian, so it slots perfectly into that. Gets a little bit of extra value off the off the Roaming Throne when it gets its triggers. So perfect inclusion. We've also got three Ellis Ilkor Sadistic Pilgrim. This guy's cool because we get to double up all of our life gain triggers, which helps us win races against other aggro decks. But also we get to double up all of our death triggers here to ping our opponent. So if we go wide with a board of incubate tokens, every time one of those incubate tokens dies, it can trigger LSL core twice if we have a roaming thrown out, or maybe even three times if we have two of them, if we're that lucky. But being able to make our opponent lose two life every time one of our creatures dies is way more significant than one, and it cuts the clock to, to winning in half. So Ellis Ilkor can actually be a win condition in and of itself. If we can get this thing to stick around, um, a lot of times our opponent gets into a mindset where uh, they assume we're trying to win through attacking, through being aggressive, and then all of a sudden we have a board full of things that can just die and trigger Ellis and we can just win that way and not even have to swing. Which leads me to my three drops and one of the most important cards in the deck, Bloated Processor. Now, Bloated Processor is a 3-mana three 3-2 three, that lets us sacrifice other Phyrexians to put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, and when it dies, we get to Incubate X, where X is its power. So, this gives us a way that if we have Ellis Ilkor, Bloated Processor, and Roaming thrown down, if we manage to curve out with those and keep them around, and now it's later in the game and we've gone wide with Incubate tokens or whatever, we can sometimes be in a situation where we can just sack our whole board to the processor one creature at a time, get double triggers off the Ellis, and just win with that way without even having to attack. But what's really cool about the bloated processor is when it dies, it incubates X, and that trigger will be doubled by the roaming throne. So if we get this thing up to being, say, a 6-5, and then it dies, we'll get two 6-6 six, six incubate tokens... And sometimes we can flip those tokens for free with Progenitor Exarch or Glissa Herald of Predation um, and just close the game out right the next turn. I think we had one game where our opponent swept the board and left behind a couple of big bloated processor tokens and just since his whole turn was sweeping the board, he had no way to stop us from just swinging in with an absolute massive amount of damage to win the game. And... Uh, you know, that's what's great about Roaming Throne. Even if Roaming Throne dies to the Sweeper, 
I mean, if it's exile removal like like Sunfall, you're out of luck. But if it's a normal sweeper, like you're still going to get your double triggers off everything that dies to that sweeper, uh, even though the roaming throne is then gone after that. So pretty pretty nutty. Bloated processor does kind of everything we want in this deck while also being a really good win condition that's hard to deal with. We've also got four bloated contaminator, another great three drop here, four four trample with toxic one. And when it deals combat damage to a, a player, we proliferate. And that proliferate trigger will, will happen twice if we have the roaming thrown out. So we're able to take all of these incubate tokens that we're making and we're able to exponentially increase how big they are and get them really huge. Uh, and sometimes just getting multiple triggers off roaming thrown uh, can sometimes lead to wins just by by toxic damage, just lead to wins with um, poison counters. Um, it's not plan A because this is the only poison creature in the deck. But getting double, or if we have two thrones out, sometimes triple uh, triggers off of that proliferate can sometimes just sometimes just make that happen out of nowhere and our opponent doesn't see it coming. So it's a cool little bit of extra spice added in. We've also got three Glissa Sun Slayers. Now this doesn't go along with our Incubate plan, but it is absolutely insane when coupled with Roaming Throne. Because if we swing in and they don't block it, I mean, they'd have to either chump block because of the first strike and death touch and we keep our Glissa. If they let it through, it's actually going to get two triggers instead of one. So we can draw two cards or destroy two enchantments or remove six counters from a permanent or some combination of those. And again, just like the other cards I've, I've brought up in this deck, something like getting a second roaming thrown out is just going to make that even more absurd because now you'll get three triggers. So there's just so many ways to curve out with value into a roaming throne so that the turn roaming throne comes down on four. We have a bunch of stuff we can do to get triggers to get value off that roaming throne that turn without having to wait until we untap the next turn. Um, and that's what's key to really kind of making a card like this work. If you can get value off at the turn it comes into play, um, by having things on the field that can get those triggers without having to spend mana, that's when you're going to get the most out of this card because even if they are able to pay the ward and are able to remove this on their turn on, on their turn with sorcery speed removal like we already got so much value that we get way ahead and then it's hard for them to catch up so this deck does that great with the the one drops two drops three drops that we do have in this deck uh and sets us up to really kind of take over the game uh if we can drop roaming thrown on four or if we're lucky with scrap gorger drop it on three now, because we're in Phyrexian Tribal, we're able to play four Cavern of Souls, which is going to make us any of the Abzan colors for our Phyrexians, uh, and also make those creatures uncounterable, which will be good against blue. We've got four Secluded Courtyard, basically the same thing, except it doesn't make them uncounterable. And then two Seed Cores, which will also give us any color of mana for Phyrexians, but if we happen to get corrupt, uh, too corrupted with Bloated Contaminator or Skrelv, um... If we just get to three poison counters, we can also start to give one ones a little extra buff. It doesn't happen often, but it's a little bit of extra value, so we've got some more tribal lands there. We're also running one Murex so that we can just make Phyrexian tokens once a turn, every turn in the late game if we're out of gas. And then a normal of assortment of dual lands here to, to finish out the deck. Uh, the deck is super fun. I feel like there's a few different ways that Phyrexian tribal could go. We could go way crazier with the dual lands. We could go up to four seed cores and have 12 tribal lands, kindred lands, um, and run five color Phyrexian because there are some Phyrexians that dip into uh, blue and red that would be really cool to add. And we could focus on making a five color version or we could pare this down, have a lot cheaper Phyrexians, not run as many of these tribal kindred lands and focus on an aristocrat style build where we double down on the uh, Ellis Ilkor roaming throne synergies um, and try to do that quicker. That's another way we could take this deck. Uh, this version of the deck right now is kind of walking the line between the two. Um, it's sort of trying to stay mid range and get as much value as we can off roaming throne. Uh, and just, just see what Phyrexian tribal, tribal is capable of uh, in combination with Roaming Throne. 
And I think there's some really interesting things here. I think some really cool stuff happens in the games. And I'm excited to see where a deck like this could go in the future. So if you have ideas about where we could take this deck and how we could alter it or evolve it moving forward, definitely comment below and let me know what you're thinking would be a cool addition or maybe a way to change up the deck. And maybe I'll explore that in a later deck tech. But without further ado, I've rambled long enough. Let's check out the games. This is kind of exactly what we want to see. This is almost perfect. Let's keep it. Lead with the Shattered Sanctum. Cavern. Phyrexian. 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 Do we play the processor first or the contaminator? We're not going to have anything to proliferate yet. So I think the processor might actually be better. Because if they kill our processor... They kill our processor, we get a creature with counters on it. Then we can start proliferating. What's up, Grixis? Welcome to the stream. What's up, Lawson? Good to see you. Just a heads up, this week's community night is going to be happening on YouTube, not Twitch. So Thursday on YouTube, we're doing a 3,000 subscriber celebration stream. It'll be community night over there. And I'll be launching channel memberships and releasing some info about uh, what's going on with the YouTube and the direction we're heading and some announcing some stuff and it, it should be pretty cool. Let's resolve that. Fast combat. I mean, go ahead and swing for four, I guess. No blocks. Kamano's gonna make things problematic, to say the least. Phyrexian. Alright, let's get the roaming throne down. Double triggers on Ellis, gain some life. Let's just pass the turn. Like he has to give the buff from the Storm Seeker to the Storm Seeker itself if he wants to be able to take out the Roman Throne. Otherwise he can't even swing with the Storm Seeker. Alright, he's going for it. Do we just jump block? I think we just jump block. He'll take two. We'll get two three threes. Oh wait, no, cause Kamano. I said it, and then I forgot it. All at the same time. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being that much of a dingus? By Rexian. Gain three life. Let's see. Does he want to lose two creatures? We're still in this. Like. We still got this, I think. Two roaming thrones against a deck like this is kind of insane. Riza, 96. Evolving Adaptive, sure. We 
We don't really have to block unless he swings with everything, and if he swings with everything, we have favorable blocks, so... Not really worried about it. <clears throat> not really worried about it. Alright, let's get this down. It's past the turn. If only we had that scrap gorger. We'd be at six right now and be able to jam two of those. And that would be very strong. Six five. No blocks. We're going to get all sorts of jiggy with it, guys. All sorts of jiggy with it. Gain all the life back. It's going to be glorious. Re. That freaking etching, man. No attacks. Like, we could swing with one processor and threaten to sack the other one to get around the Kamano, because this goes up to four power. Even if he blocks with the Storm Seeker, we trade, but we get three. Three incubate tokens off the processor we sack. Which gives us nine life. No, they won't come in as creatures. There won't be any life. But still. I think it's just better to do those sorts of tricks on the defense right now. Although that doesn't look very promising. Hello, Finn. Alright, Beast Caller. Sure. Certainly has a lot of creatures. Swing with the Beast Scholar. Trample haste. Skibble bopple. Trample haste. Could just block with Ellis and trade. But I don't want to. Doesn't really serve any purpose to actually block. Because we're just going to do this and he has trample. That's okay. Let's take 8. We'll go to 13. Turn one of these dudes into an actual dude. Play a land. I think we just do this. Gain a bunch of life back. Do this. Gain a bunch of life back. Swing. I mean, I think we win, right? Every creature we sack is going to do one damage. And we've got a bunch of creatures down. So let's just do this. Three, six, nine. Yeah. We've totally got it. I mean, we don't even need to attack. <clears throat> but we're going to, to see if we can eke out any extra, any extra value here. But we have the game won. He got stuck at three land, but like, I don't feel bad because Gruul plays so little lands because they don't need very many lands, so it didn't really slow him down much.
Trigger, trigger, trigger. Okay, he sees it. Yeah, I'm uh I'm in the same boat, Finn. I actually got on a little later than normal too. Alright, we'll keep this. This looks really good actually. This looks like it's gonna set us up for a situation where I'm like, what a time to be alive, you know? Does he have a counter spell for the scrap forger? No. Come on, caverns. No, he's playing clay fired bricks. Okay. Well, we still have the cavern. This just got really interesting. Phyrexian. Hackle. Hackle. Phyrexian. Do a little bit of this. Let me think. I think... Honestly, I think we're going to jam this. We've got nothing to exile, unfortunately, but it's okay. We can play both of these next turn. Get triggers. Maybe even just swing with the Scrap Forger. 1-4 one, one Menace. Alright, more planes. Triggers, Ackle, Packle. First among equals. He was the first to be equal. <laughs> Gets rid of another clay fired bricks. Oh, jeez. Now, my worry here is that he's going to have a Sunfall. That's my concern. That is my concern. And I think if he's going to have a Sunfall, our best bet is to only play the Grafted Butcher. All right, double menace. Not that that really matters. We'll just swing with everybody. It's 13 damage, puts him at seven. We can do another six to him. I think we can just win, guys. If he doesn't have a way to stop some of this damage. He's got to hit the right thing. Ellis. Let's see. Two pings. Two pings. And then an extra two damage is six. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Fifteen. Fifteen. 
definitely something here. Sack you. We're gonna do 10 right now and put him at 8. We don't really have a way... If we could sack the bloated processor itself, we'd be able to turn the token into a creature and sack that. So we'd get two more sacks out of this. But unfortunately, no dice. I'm gonna have to just sack here. And then hit for 11. Put him at 7. And, I mean... At this point, it doesn't make sense to play the Inquisitor if we can't win off of it. We have to prepare for the worst. We have to prepare for a Sunfall, which is probably coming. Glyph Bridge. Interesting. That's, uh, that's pretty strong. <laughs> Ooh boy, two six sixes. This looks good. We'll keep it. Oh, disconnect. Okay, seed core, pass the turn. I actually got to play, so I guess it's not that bad. I guess we'll just do it like that. I mean, I could have played the Exarch and swung with a 2-3 next turn because of the Butcher, but like, I'd rather save it as a 5-drop. We drop our 3-drops next turn, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Pass turn. Drink coffee. Leyline Binding. Hit the scroll. Do it. Sick. I mean, I guess we swing, right? And then we play Glissa. Because it kind of forces him to have to kill Glissa, right? Maybe. Like, if he doesn't kill Glissa, we get to kill the Leyline Binding and get the Skrull back? Imagine if we top decked a throne. We did not top deck a throne. But. We did do this. He's probably going to Sunfall next turn. I wonder if we should just draw cards. Because getting Skrull back isn't great if he Sunfalls. We'll do it like that. And then we can make sure 
he gets a small Sunfall token by sacking everything to the processor. It'll just be a 2-2 token instead of a 5-5. Okay, herd migration. And then he jams what? Invasion of Zendikar? No, another Leyline Binding. Well, he has to hit the processor, right? But he also has to hit the Sun Slayer. So, kind of screwed if you do, screwed if you don't, to be honest. I mean, we'll just do that. I could have just let him take it and then destroyed the Leyline Binding with Glissa. But I'd rather just try to win next turn. Oh god, another processor? Another processor. I mean, we're absolutely going to play it. And then we swing. And then we sack this. To survive. And then we hit. And then... We could destroy an enchantment again. I still think drawing a card is correct. Uh, end the turn. We can hold up the two mana to transform this if he sunfalls. Archangel of Wrath. Fully kick. So what does he do? Kill Glissa? I mean, you're not getting any life. Alright. Transform you. Oh, I should have transformed and blocked. I forgot it was going to get plus one, plus one from the butcher. I could have blocked and blown him out. That would have been crazy. All right, do we Norns Inquisitor and Glissa, or do we just Roaming Throne? Maybe we wait. Maybe we swing. Yeah, we'll do it like this. Oh, you want to do seven to my guy. I mean, we could kill both, but we wouldn't do the five damage if we do. I think I'm fine with just this. Although, in hindsight, I feel like maybe I should have played the Roaming Throne first. Alright, we're going to play Glissa. Again, we're still worried about Sunfall. We're going to hold up two mana to transform that if he Sunfalls, because then we have something to swing back with. Alright, Herd Migration. It's not bad, but it is definitely not going to be good enough. Lots of roaming thrones. Lots of roaming thrones. Let's see, if he blocks with all of them, we kill four. He'd have to block with everything. With everything. If 
Phyrexian. Bing, bang, boom. <coughs> he has to block those two, so he can't kill the Glissa. Best he can do is jump block it. That's fine. I mean, sure. Uh, we probably want to kill the 4-4. Four four. End the turn. We'll just play it slow. We'll play it safe. It'll be fine. Glissa triggers multiple times is kind of wild. It's really, really hard to effectively block her. Besides you, that's fine. We got another one. Oh, we don't have... Oh, we do have a basic. Haha! -ha, we have one basic. I was smart. I was the opposite of not smart. But I think he's out of luck, man. Like... Rolling Throne, name Phyrexian. Swing with Glissa, he's got a chump block. We'll play uh, Norn's Inquisitor. Incubate twice. And those will come into play as 4-4s four because of the Roaming Thrones. So yeah, we got them. And it would be kind of nutty. We mulligan. We take this, I think. Have to throw back the Roaming Throne because it's expensive. Cavern. Phyrexian. I mean, do we just do we just play an Exarch? I think we just play an Exarch just to have something. It'll let us play like Norn's Inquisitor next turn, and then flip the Incubate token for no mana. Pass the turn. If he tries to take out one of our creatures, we flip in response. He's gonna play Malcolm. Rafine. Okay. So it's this deck. That's fine. Resolve. Flip the boy. Phyrexian. Are you gonna take the chance, friend? All right, all right. That's fine, I'll give it to you. You're gonna have to have removal for Glissa, or you're gonna be in a world of hurt. We can take all the counters off of Malcolm. Ouch. Ouch. Digging for removal. 
Urtai or Wandering Emperor or something like that. To take out the Glissa, I assume. Let's see. Alright, so... Wandering Emperor. Here we come. Phyrexian. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Takes the three. Doesn't want to waste the Emperor. Needs to hold it for Sunslayer. That's fine. That is completely fine. X gonna give it to you. He gonna give it to you. <clears throat> White. Black. We'll play Ellis. White. We'll pay one. Give me all those glorious triggers, thank you. Three, six, ten, eleven. Do we swing with the X arc? Twelve. No. No matter what, we're still going to need three things to die in order to have lethal off of Ellis. If we had a way to sack everything right now, we could actually win. Especially with the Wandering Emperor coming down, because we can just sack whatever he's trying to take out, prevent him from gaining two. Six zero on the Chaos Seal lulled, uh, sealed lulls. That's that's kind of kind of crazy. Oh, he's just gonna block with an Anchorage. Didn't, I didn't see that coming. And then do that. I mean, I guess. Get some triggers, make you lose some life. Incubated in response. It would have been a 5 5. Very close, though. Very, very close. Guess I shouldn't have been playing around that Wandering Emperor for so long because he actually didn't have it. Should have just been jamming. He's taking too long. Like, the game's over. You don't have to take multiple minutes to decide what to discard. <laughs> More forgiven. And a dub the unforgiven. Let's, uh, let's keep this. 
Let's keep it for the sake of keeping it. Scrailed. Go to you. Phyrexian. Norns Inquisitor. Go to you. Go to you, RJ. Human. Human tribal. Alright. Well, it's the Battle of the Tribes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Pass the turn. Human. Human. Jarena. Okay. Well, at least we don't have to worry about our graveyard getting exiled. Alright, so. We're gonna go like this. And then we're gonna do this. Manus. And then we're gonna do some swinging. Let's go. If he blocks unfavorably, we can sack to the processor. Alright, he's gonna take 10. He must have Brutal Cathar for Bloated Processor next turn. But even still, I mean, we're way ahead as far as racing. And we just use Skrelf. What could he possibly have? Felden? Sure. can only swing so much. He needs blockers. We'll just take the damage. I'm not worried about your pitiful four damage. Well then. Well then. This is going to be wild. Normally I would try to go for the value play. We're just going to give everything first strike and death touch. to sack Jarena. Let's see. Do we want the token, or do we want to deal an extra point of damage? We want the token. Or the, the counter, rather. Hit for three. End turn. But Jarena's gone now. And we only got rid of one and a half cards. Just felt it, huh? Just felt it.
Resolve all. I mean, we'll just do this and go to 11. That's fine. That's fine. My turn. Hmm. Can't play Ellis. And Grafted Butcher. Which kind of sucks. Incubate two twice, or first strike and death touch. I mean, first strike and death touch is still correct, right? And we'll swing with Skrelv, since he's out of cards. If he blocks, Ellis is gonna ping him, so I think we got it. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. So honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there and if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately that's somewhere up that way also subscribe circle below do all the things